Thank you, Doctor. We wanted to talk a little bit more now about uh, summertime fun and recreation, since uh, laser tag was appropriate in that regard. Mm -hmm. uh, mosquitoes everywhere. They're starting, yes. Okay. Uh, it's going to get worse, but yeah, we're just now starting. How can we protect ourselves? Well, the, the big concern these days is the West Nile virus because we had that uh, hit us, oh, late uh, 90s is when it got to the United States, and of course now it's spread all the way across involving nearly every state in the Union, if not every state at this point. California being hit also. Uh, last year we had 445 cases, including 15 deaths, none in Placer County. This year so far we have had mosquitoes found in eight different counties and we expect that it's going to get worse as the summer goes on. Uh, there will be cases in Placer County, there will be uh, human cases in Placer County, but uh, I don't want to make it sound all doom and gloom because e even though that sounds bad, uh, you need to know that 80 percent of cases uh, do not have severe symptoms and most people who get infected don't even know they have it. Of the people with severe symptoms, uh, which is actually less than 1 percent that have severe symptoms, only 3 to 15 percent actually end in death. So even though it is a, a deadly illness, many, 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 many people who get it are fine. And these uh, symptoms uh, feel like, what, like a flu? Uh, yeah, or? pretty much flu-like, yeah. As, as <laughs> at the same time, we're looking out for the uh, swine flu right. or the H1N1 flu. We're, we're also having, uh, looking out in the summer for the uh, West Nile virus, which is, yeah, headache, uh, confusion, fever. You're looking at me like you're confused. No, it just, it, it's the same thing as swine flu. It's amazing. Well, uh, not so much the, the confusion. Uh, we don't see that so much with the swine, swine flu, but with yeah. the West Nile virus. Yeah, it infects when it's a bad infection. Yeah. It causes encephalitis or meningitis or meningoencephalitis if, if you have both of them affected. Right. So that's what we're looking for, flu-like symptoms with confusion. Can you take a blood test and figure out differentiate who, uh, what disease you, you have? You can, although uh, we would only do that in, in severe cases. And since there is no specific treatment for the West Nile virus, it's only for tracking purposes because it doesn't influence treatment at all. Treatment is just supportive. Interesting. Uh, one of the things that we found out today that you, uh, you turned me on to today, I thought was very interesting. You know, Placer County uh, comes out and gives us tips that we should give people this time of year because of the threat of the West Nile virus which I presume did actually come from the West Nile area years ago as it migrated across the globe. U Uganda uh, mm -hmm. is where it started and, uh, and then up until the 90s was pretty much isolated to East Africa and the Middle East. Travel brought it over, cargo ships? Somebody like brought it over. Yeah. Uh, I don't know uh, if birds migrate that far or not, but somehow it got to, I think the first cases were in New York. I don't know if that was when you were there or not. No, I didn't do it, I swear. I have an alibi. Okay. <laughs> I was bringing in gold bullion or something. I don't know. <laughs> we were talking about uh, these things last time. We were talking about swine flu. Yeah. Very few diseases can migrate from one species to another, and this can, right? West Nile virus, interesting. It, it lives in mosquitoes, the virus does. It uh, can get into birds or squirrels uh, as an a reservoir host, they get bit by another mosquito that then is infected and can give it to humans and horses are the main species that are being affected by it in our area. Is this also what they call like a mutagen or it changes its chemistry so that... I, I don't know of any big mutations in the West Nile virus. I, I think it was more a, a matter of migration, yeah. more so than a, a mutation that got it here. So tell us what people can do around their property to fight mosquitoes. Okay, the uh, state of California has a website for it, which is westnile.ca.gov, and they want people to look at that to learn about what they can do to protect themselves. They also have a phone number for reporting dead birds or squirrels to a lesser extent. But dead birds, that number is 1-877-968-2200. W-N-V-B-I-R-D, if you want to remember it as West Nile virus bird, W-N-V-B-I-R-D. Uh, it's an 877 toll-free number. That's the state of California for reporting that. Okay. So they want us to report that. They also want us to get rid of any standing water because the mosquitoes lay their eggs in stagnant water. Uh, also, if you're going to have water, uh, you can get mosquito fish for free 
from the Placer County Vector Control District. And they also have a phone number. Uh, do we have that available? Yes, Doctor. I think it's 1-888-768-2340. That. Is that the vector one? I hope. That, that is. Okay. Yeah, we have two different ones. Okay. Right. Uh, yeah, we put so the vector th one up. They can give you the, uh, the mosquito fish if you call and ask for that. Right. And they're free. They, they are free. The other things you can do is make sure your screens and your windows and doors are intact. Or if you don't have any, get one and control the efforts of the uh, Placer Vector Control District. And you can call them there for some information as well. But if you go to the website there of um, westnilevirus.ca.gov, you'll also find all the other numbers and information. A lot of information having to do with this come out ever since we had to start battling it. And as mm -hmm. usual, you know, every time we get some new disease that, that comes to us, there's always a lot of doctors and researchers who are out there right away trying to figure out what are we facing, mm -hmm. you know, what are the pitfalls, the possibilities, et cetera. And I think it's probably in medical science the responses these days are a lot faster than they may yeah. have been years ago. Yeah, so. we've been seeing a lot of stuff come out, mostly with personal protection, which mm -hmm. is the last element of what we need to be doing is protecting our, our skin, covering ourselves, and using insect repellent. And, yeah, you mentioned that stuff's changing a little bit. Mm -hmm. In the old days, we always used to talk about DEET, D -E -E -T, right. the uh, insect repellent that is sprayed onto the skin. Yeah. Uh, trying to get everybody to use that instead of other agents. And now we've got some possible alternatives to that. There's been a lot of concern over neurologic toxicity. It's been overplayed by some groups. It does exist, though. It's uh, a problem when people wear very high concentrations of it. Mm. It's a problem when they have it applied to skin with other things, for example, sunscreens, which will increase the absorption of it six times. Hmm. Uh, can cause some toxicity. There have been cases, although very, very few, considering this stuff's been around for six decades for this purpose, sprayed yeah. on people. Very little problem with it. But there are some newer agents. One that uh, the EPA has uh, approved and that uh, is starting to be encouraged by a lot of... Uh, the official organizations, uh, including the World Health Organization, is picaridin, P-I-C-A-R-I-D-I-N. It supposedly, in a study so far in Europe and Australia, has been found to have no adverse events. Okay. And so um, when people who use uh, DEET have a bad reaction to it, what is it, usually rash? Oh, What's usually that? a rash, yeah, just yeah. a rash. But if you're having neurologic symptoms from it, it can be like the West Nile virus, confusion, uh, disordered thinking, difficulty speaking, sedation. Um, how long does it usually take to uh, incubate between the time you get bitten by a mosquito that's infected with this stuff and you start showing the symptoms? Any, any gauge? Three to 14 days. I see. So that's a wide scope. It is, yeah. You could get bitten by something, not even realize it, and then be sick for some mysterious reason, not know what's Two wrong. Two weeks later. Very good. Okay. Uh, we have a picture of something we wanted to show you. Apparently, Walmart is uh, talking about a product that uh, the doctor and I were speaking about today. We're going to show you what that is. And apparently, the interesting thing about this is this is a material that does not have any DEET in it whatsoever. Correct. Uh, but some research would imply that uh, this material has gotten some good results. Uh, tell us a little bit about it, and we'll show it to the folks. The, the product is called Bite Blocker. Uh, it's supposedly a natural repellent. It seems to have in it... Yeah, I've never even seen it before, so that's my first time seeing it. Uh, it's supposed to have soybean oil, coconut oil, geranium oil. Uh, been around in the United States since 97. Now, these substances are not new in the use as uh, an insect repellent. This particular company came up with this mixture, and they actually got some good data on it. Using the, uh, the standard preparation there, they found that it provides 97% protection against mosquitoes even after three and a half hours. And that's wow. in a study that also compared the DEET, although it was a very weak DEET, it was only six and a half percent, that only provided 86 percent protection. So 97 percent compared to 86 percent. Now a lot of people, of course, go out hiking, go out camping nowadays, and uh, you know, they might be concerned about what to do, let's say, if they do encounter a place that has a lot of mosquitoes, usually, what, dusk and dawn are the worst time when they proliferate, but yeah. There they're, are some places they're they all over are the present place. all night long, but yeah, as dusk and dawn are the worst, and so those are the times you want to try to not be outdoors. Uh, also, wearing the long clothing, wearing the insect repellent, 